Welcome to the Hairpreneur Show. Awesome conversations that'll provide you with new insight, crazy good ideas, and proven strategies to help you build the business and life of your dreams. Now, please welcome to the stage our host, Ryan Whedon. Hey everybody, Ryan Whedon here. I am so excited to be back here with episode 5 of the Hairpreneur Show. We've got a cool segment in store for you today. We've been going through the book, How to Make Six Figures as an Independent Stylist. So we're going to continue that. Uh, We're going to be talking about reviews and Yelp specifically, how to get five-star reviews to be the normal in your salon and for you personally. So we're going to talk about that, and this is especially a good time to get into it because it's the holidays, and we all know the holidays for hairstylists can be extremely intense. We've got clients flocking in. We've got kids back from school. Everybody and their mom, literally, and their mom wants to get their hair done. So we have got so much ahead of us in the next few weeks. We're looking at our schedules, I'm sure, and I've, I've been there. It's been a while since I've been in the salon full-time, but wow. I remember I used to look toward uh, from after Thanksgiving through the new year, and I would be dreading what was about to happen. I was excited because I knew I was going to make a lot of money. And that was a good, good thing because I knew that January and February were going to be really, really slow months. It's statistically slower in the salon during those months. So I knew I had to work my butt off, make as much as I could, and more or less stock it away and feed myself during the cold winter months, like I'm a bear up in the Arctic somewhere, right? So this is a very important time for us stylists to make a lot of money and and work toward the future. But what I'm going to suggest here, and this is what worked for me in becoming more productive in my business when I was behind the chair full time, I got to a point where I didn't want to work during the holidays anymore. Nobody else had to work during the holidays. Of course, we have a very different profession, but stylists just look at other stylists and we kind of shrug our shoulders and just say, you know, this is the career we chose. So I guess we just got to suck it up and deal with it, right? No, you don't have to. And I'm here to tell you that I've proved that you don't have to do that. If you want to be able to take time with your family and actually enjoy one of the happiest times of the year with your family and being able to take vacations with everybody else instead of having to work and serve other people at that time when we want to be with our family, we want to be going to those eggnog and ugly sweater parties, we want to be having fun, we want to be filling our kids up with this great joy in showing them all these cool things, you know, taking them to houses. And we don't want to be exhausted. We don't want to come home dragging at the end of the day, ready for a glass of wine and some Netflix. And we don't want to talk to anybody because we're sick of people. We need to get to a point where we know that we come back in January and we're going to be busy. We come back in February and we're going to be busy. And this is the time to do that. One way to get your clients coming back after the busy holiday season is to start focusing now on building up your Yelp reviews. Even if you're working for another salon, they can still mention you in the salon's Yelp page. So say Salon Spruce, that's my salon. If a stylist asks one of their clients to review them or one of their their clients does review them under Salon Spruce's account, normally they will say, went to Alec and she was fantastic. I would definitely recommend her. These word of mouth from Yelp reviews are going to increase your business. And when you have so much business coming in during these holidays, now is the time to capitalize on it. Normally, we're just trying to work really hard to get through the day and then we'll figure out our business and how we're going to make more money, how we're going to get more clients in our chair after the new year, right? But that's not going to work because it's already too late by that point. We have to start planting the seed. We have to start working toward building up our reviews, working toward pre-booking our clients. And there's several other ways to get clients to come back after the holidays. And this season is the best time to do that because we have so many clients coming in. We've got a chance to get our one-year clients to come in, you know, the clients that come in every single year and that's it. They just come in for the holidays, get their hair done, then you don't see them again until next year, but they live in the area. There are ways to get them to come back a lot more frequently. There are some clients, of course, they come back from school and they come in with their mom or, and they get their hair done and then they leave and you don't see them until they're on their next break. But most clients are, are in the area, they're looking for a new stylist and they want 
to come back more regularly. They're just looking for someone to deliver what they want on their hair. And this is your opportunity. So don't blame it on, oh, I'm not going to see them again. They're just a new client. They're just coming in for the holidays. All excuses. You got to just send those excuses out the window and start taking control of your own success. You have to take responsibility for your own success. And you have to work hard to do that. One way to do it is by building yourself up on Yelp, whether you have your own business or whether you're working in somebody else's business. So that is should your focus and that should be your focus going forward into these holiday months. Now, let's dive into the next chapter of how to make six figures as an independent stylist. Here we go. Step four, win the Yelp game. A good reputation is more valuable than money. Publilius Cirrus. Online review systems like Yelp can be finicky beasts. A good review can be your best friend, while a negative review can crush your business. It doesn't matter if you're choosing a book on Amazon.com or picking a restaurant for a date. The more stars something has, the more attractive it is. People associate things with higher ratings as being better. Whether it's concerning a book or a restaurant or a hairdresser for that matter, it doesn't matter. What the population perceives, so shall they believe. That perception is all you should be concerned about at this point. Now, when a company like Yelp is on your side, i.e. you have a favorable rating, your phone can ring off the hook with new clients fighting to get an appointment with you. Plus, it doesn't cost a thing and could prove to be your business's lifeblood continually serving as an endless source of free marketing. All that can be yours if you have a good star rating. Whether or not a business's reputation is well-received online may seem like a dice throw. It may seem like luck to have a nearly flawless, favorable reputation. Fortunately for you, I disagree. It's not luck. It's a game. Better yet, it's a game you can win. And even better than that, I'll soon describe in detail how my proven strategy will help you dominate it. It doesn't matter whether you only have one client or a thousand. I continue to use Yelp because it is a recognizable company and probably the largest online business review site in the US. However, I have a true love-hate relationship with it. On one hand, I love Yelp because we haven't had to pay for marketing in over four years now due to our stellar five-star reputation. Yet, on the other hand, I hate it because getting bad reviews stinks. Unfortunately, they do happen. There is nothing fun about being bashed publicly. It's a true ego assassin. You may not even have done anything wrong, but that doesn't matter. That terrible review is online now for all to see, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's obvious now that the game has changed over the past decade. We all used to rely on our friends' recommendations when choosing a restaurant, dentist, or mechanic. Not anymore. We'd rather Google it on our own and find what best suits our individuality. In essence, word of mouth is dying. Although it's still deemed as the most preferred referral source of all, it is a quickly diminishing source. The less people rely on their friends' recommendations, the more your online reputation can decide your ultimate fate. Whether you're just starting a salon or have owned one for 20 years, it's vital to know what the public is saying about you. Good or bad, it's critically important to always focus on strengthening your brand. Successful businesses need high ratings and a plethora of them to continually stay successful. My salon happens to be located in a city that's flooded with competition. There are over 90 salons within a five mile radius. Now that's a lot of competing salons, but I'm not worried at the moment. That's because my salon is currently the highest ranked salon in my area and has been for some time. When someone Google searches for a place to get their hair done nearby, we are always one of the first to be called. Due to the strength of our Yelp reputation, we never have a slow season. In fact, we have a wait list of new clients begging to get in. At this point, you might be wondering how you can possibly become one of the highest ranked salons in your area, especially when other businesses have been around for so much longer. Sure, your competitors may have a head start, but that doesn't mean you won't soon lead the pack. Now, although my strategy won't make you successful overnight, I don't know anything that will, it will work and you'll reap countless rewards in the years ahead. I did it myself and now I'm able to pay myself thousands more dollars per month that I don't have to spend on advertising. One thing I've learned with Yelp is that upset people are exponentially much more likely to post a negative review after having a lousy experience. 
Whatever happened in their mind ruined their day. They feel like it's their duty to humanity to splash your guts all over the internet so other people won't have to suffer similar consequences. Again, whether or not the negative review was justified, it's still a negative reflection on the business. It's going to happen from time to time, so just accept it. Sooner or later, you'll see that dreaded one star pop up. It's inevitable. Just understand, no matter how hard you try, you can't please everyone. As long as you've put your best foot forward, you've done all you could. If someone is unhappy with you or your service, there's little you can do to change their mind. Instead of wasting any time thinking about the naysayers, what you should be focusing on are your supporters, your happy clients. It's these clients, your cheerleaders, that will boost your reputation to the top. What's funny is the problem you will face is that they are happy. It might not sound like a problem, but it is. Getting a happy, satisfied client to write something nice about you online is like pulling teeth. You can ask them politely and repeatedly to recommend your business online, but they've forgotten all about you by the time they got home. That's because they're satisfied customers. Although they voice they would love to write you a review, it just isn't a priority in their lives. Your job is to make it their priority because it's a priority for you. Remember, you are a salesperson first, and this is a sale you have to make. The success of your business depends on it. I was able to become one of the highest rated salons in San Diego in less than three years by using simple strategies. I haven't had to pay a dime in marketing expenses, and my phone continually rings with new clients off the hook wanting to get on my wait list. If you're serious about your business, you need to take initiative. Our salon makes it a mission to get our satisfied clients to post raving reviews about us online, not just to boost our overall ranking, but also because the more positive reviews we have, the less impact the negative ones will make. Here are three strategies I've personally used to build an unbeatable Yelp reputation and keep the phone ringing with new clients dying to get in. Your past clients. For those of you not completely new to hair, this is where I would start. It's the easiest and least stressful way to build up your online reputation and boost your client list. First, I'd recommend reaching out to your past clients and friends. Anyone and everyone you can think of whom you perform some kind of hair service on. It could be anything from a bang trim to a full highlight. They could be your best friend or an old client from 10 years ago. Anyone that can testify to your integrity and professionalism as a hairstylist. I sat down with a piece of paper and scrolled through the contact list on my phone, jotting down the names of everyone that I had previously performed a salon service on. Then I pulled up Facebook and did the same thing with my friends list on there. When I had my list complete, I was shocked at how many people I could contact. I called, texted, emailed, and Facebook messaged them all with a nice little note asking for support and a hyperlink directly to my Yelp listing. I wanted to make it as simple as possible for them. I tailored each message personally to each contact. For instance, when reaching out to past clients, this is what I wrote. Hi, insert client name. In this case, I use Kim. Hi, Kim. I hope you, your family, and your business are going well. Last year, I finally started my own salon business and have been very successful in building a strong brand thus far. One of my biggest sources of new business is from my five-star Yelp reputation. I know it's been a while since I've done your hair, but I was hoping you might be able to take a few moments to jot a few nice things down about myself, my skills, and or customer service on my Yelp's business page. This would be awesome. The link to my business is, and then you insert your link, your favorable recommendation would make my day. Thank you so, so much, and I hope to see you in the salon again soon. Gratefully, Ryan. My goal was simply to reach out to people that I had worked on that liked me and would support me. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But the sometimes it worked group was all that mattered to me. Your current clients. The next area I would focus on would be your existing clients. These are the ones that come to you regularly for services and always appear to leave happy. In our heads, we think getting these clients to recommend us online will be easy, right? How hard is it to take two minutes Log on to Yelp and post something positive to help your hairdresser grow his or her business. Well, people, I'm here to tell you it is harder than you think. Much. That's because they are happy with your service, like we touched on earlier. This is when you have to start playing the salesman. An old marketing principle says it takes six to eight touches to make a sale. A touch 
is a contact to your prospect, in this case, your happy client. We are trying to make a sale, which means posting a positive review about their experience with you. We are asking them to write a few sentences about how awesome you are at what you do. Now it's time to grab another pad of paper and make a list of all your existing happy clients. You may have already asked some for reviews in the past, but unless they've written one or openly voiced that they won't for some reason, maybe they don't want to set up an account that's happened before, then they need to be on that list. Next, make eight columns to the side of their names and number the columns headers from one to eight. This is where you're going to notate your contacts either by phone call, text, email, or Facebook message. Once you have this completed, it's time to start contacting every name on that list. Each time you send a message or make a phone call asking for their recommendation, make a check mark in the column, note the type of communication and the date at which you sent it. For instance, if you are contacting someone for the first time by email, simply write email 4-14-2016. It's important to try different forms of communication to reach them. Not everyone checks email, but maybe a text will do the trick or vice versa. It's also important to record the date as well so that you're able to space out the communication and not annoy your clients. They're already happy. We don't want to annoy them. Our goal is to get their recommendation, not irritate them. You know your clients better than anyone else, so maybe you should send an email once a week and then a text three weeks later. Don't wait too long in between contacts, but also be careful of sending them back to back. You will learn as you go what works best. The point is that you're actually doing it systematically. Personally, I made it into a game. I made beautiful spreadsheets with fancy colors. Every time I pulled up my Yelp account and saw a shiny new review, a smile would come across my face and I could happily scratch their names off the list. Sometimes it would only take one contact. Other times it would take eight. Sometimes it never happened, so I'd eventually stop. Not everyone wants to review, and that's fine. Most will, though. They just need a little nudge. Don't worry. As long as you continue to be a nice person, provide value, and do your job well, they will continue to come to you and love you all the same. Trust me. Exchange services for reviews. When I first started out on my own a few years back, I literally only had about five paying clients. Not nearly enough to, to survive on. Not by a long shot. I needed clients in my chair and I needed them fast. I also needed to begin building a strong online reputation so that when someone looked at my salon up on Yelp, when they looked it up, they'd be impressed. It was time to be proactive. It was time to leave my comfort zone and hit the streets. When I was at the salon and didn't have any clients, which was like 95% of the time, I'd grab my business cards and take it to the streets. I would walk around the neighborhood and search for, for my perfect clients like we talked about in the previous chapter. When I found someone with hair I'd like to work with, I'd simply introduce myself as a master stylist that was new to the area. I'd then offer to do their hair, whether it was a cut or color, in exchange for a positive Yelp review if they were satisfied with their service. I never asked anyone to give me a fake or fictitious review because I feel that most people can see right through that. So perform the service, win them over during the service, and make sure you deliver the value in whatever service you're giving them, and they will be more than happy to rave about their wonderful experience. This is a total win-win method to build your reputation. First of all, your new customer is getting a professional hair service for free. Chances are they will be very satisfied as long as you can deliver a better than average service. They may even refer their friends to you, paying customers. This is also a perfect opportunity to pre-book their next appointment at a regular price. Also, in the off chance they don't take a liking to the finished result, the chances that they will write you a negative review is still slim to none, even if you totally destroyed their hair. You gave them a free service after all. They might even tip you. And that's all for today. I hope you liked that, how to master the Yelp game, how to win the Yelp game. So. Reviews are so important to our business, and this is the time that we need to capitalize on all the clients that we have in our chair. So please, please, please start putting these principles into practice. And before you know it, it's going to be second nature. And what that's going to produce is less time for clients to find availability in your chair. You're going to be fully booked in no time. This does happen. And once you start to get the flow going, you're going to have more and more clients pre-booking, more and more clients coming from these reviews and your reputation is going to be soaring because of it. So take this opportunity, pre-book your clients, get them to, to give you a positive Yelp review, a favorable Yelp review, 
mention it that way too. Don't just say, I just don't, don't want it, just any review. Just say, I would love a positive review. Because that way you're, you're placing it in their head that you don't need just like, yes, I had a hair service. It was okay. You want a positive review from your cheerleaders here. And that's what's going to help to boost your business, to get you more referrals in the door, and to get that money coming in without you having to work for it. So your books will be busy after the holidays. Might not happen this year, but this is when you start working on it. And before you know it, March comes around, you're going to get all these people that are coming back. Maybe you're going to get them back in February. So take your clients now for November, try to book them in January, your clients for December, try to push them towards February. Get them back, start filling up those slow months. You can do it. I have faith in you. I did it. And if I can do it, you can do it. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being a supportive member here at the Hairpreneur Show. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Hairpreneur Show podcast. Go now to www.thehpshow.com to sign up and get first dibs on our weekly education directly to your inbox. Thanks again for listening. Please share the love and tell a friend about us. Till next week, you're awesome.